All right, wonderful. It looks like we have a lot of people joining on. Welcome everyone to today's webinar hosted by caring.com. Today we'll be discussing the cost of empty beds, diving into why you should consider that empty bed to be your most expensive and how online leads can help fill yours. As we begin, I'd like to cover a couple housekeeping items for today's webinar. So this is a one-way webcast, meaning only the presenters from Caring will have video and audio throughout today's presentation. However, we would still love to hear from you. At any point throughout the presentation, please submit your questions using the Q&A section within Zoom. Our team will be answering those questions at the end of today's presentation. One of the most common questions that we receive is, will this webinar be recorded? And the answer is yes, we are recording and we will plan to distribute out both the recording and the slides after today's presentation. This free webinar is brought to you by Caring.com. Now for those joining us who may be less familiar with Caring, Caring.com is a leading online resource for senior living and senior care. Our organization was founded by caregivers for caregivers. Our flagship website, shown here, caring.com, was created and launched in 2007 to equip family caregivers to make better decisions, save time and money, and feel less alone and less stressed in providing senior care to their loved ones. Today, we have a portfolio of websites and referral services that millions of people use every day to research senior living. These websites include assistedliving.org, memorycare.com, and senioradvice.com, just to name a few. And thousands of senior living communities and in-home care agencies partner with Caring to reach their target audience who is actively looking online for care solutions. One of the many reasons caregivers turn to Caring is for our High Integrity Reviews Program. We have over 350,000 reviews, with over 50,000 reviews added in 2021 alone. And we'll be talking about how Caring's Reviews Program is a tool that you can leverage when it comes to boosting occupancy later in today's presentation. First, I'd like to introduce you to today's presenters. Now, for those of you who saw our promotions, you may notice one change here. Um, unfortunately, Jason, our Chief Marketing Officer, is under the weather and unable to make it. But like every business these days, we have to be a bit flexible during these pandemic times. So my name is Olivia Duke. I'm the Director of B2B Marketing here at Caring. My background is in performance marketing, and I've managed everything from paid search, SEO, email, and content marketing programs. So I'm happy to offer the digital marketing perspective to today's presentation. We also have Han Huang, who is our Executive Vice President of Partner Sales and Success. Han leads our efforts in partnering with senior living organizations like yourself to help your community grow and maintain high occupancy. And through the efforts of our partner success team, he's focused on making sure that partnership continues to thrive into the future. So Han, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Olivia. Now to walk you through our agenda for today, we are going to start off by explaining what we really mean when we say empty beds are your most expensive and why you should consider online referrals as a solution for boosting occupancy. Then we'll cover insights into what that online consumer really looks like, who they are, and what they're seeing as they begin their search. Third, we're going to take a look across our different marketing channels to give an overview of the costs and considerations as you think about different types of marketing. And then we're going to dive into how best to calculate your return on investment when you are evaluating an online referral program. And then finally, we're gonna cover best practices that you can adopt to improve performance and generate even better yield from your online referral partnership with Caring. Now to get things started, I'm going to hand it off to Han, who's gonna talk through the importance of boosting occupancy and what empty beds are costing you. Over to you, Han. Thanks, Olivia, and hello to everybody. Um, so I wanna start out with a myth out there that is simply too expensive to fill beds with lead referral partners. And my response is always that the most expensive bed is the empty one. The reality is once you layer in all your fixed costs, such as facility costs, minimum staff that needs to be there, dining operation, you name it, right? The room that's empty is driving zero revenue when you're still paying for much of that cost already. 
industry-wide occupancy is estimated about 78%, uh, which means on average, 22% of those beds are empty. Some communities might be full with a long wait list. And sure, if you're fortunate to be in that situation, you know, you could be optimizing for lower cost move-ins, you know, as you work through that wait list, and that's fine. Uh, but for the average community, if you're 20 percent empty, why wouldn't you take every lead you could get, including caring.com leads, to raise your census? So the beauty about our model is that the return on investment is very clear. In our paper move-in model, you only pay us when we deliver you an actual resident. Most marketing you know, that an operator does itself doesn't guarantee a move-in. And, you know, when you look at the ROI, it scales as the resident stays longer, typically breaking even around four months. So the vast majority of residents a referral partner delivers will be ROI positive and boost your census. And I'll get into more detail on that a little bit later in the webinar. Thanks, Alan. So for those of you watching, if you are at less than 100% occupancy and you aren't leveraging online referrals from Caring, Khan brought up some great points for why you should be considering an additional source for you to gain new residents. So we're going to talk through online leads, but when we talk about online leads, we know that there are some concerns and hesitations that come up. And the truth is that people who are searching online they might be in an earlier stage or just less familiar with the options in their area. So now I'd like to share some insights on this audience and how they behave, and that can help you become more familiar with this online consumer. So every time someone calls into our family advisor team at Caring, we are collecting information on who they are and how they relate to the senior who needs the care. And what we found is looking at recent data of these calls is that 30% of callers are looking for options for themselves. But the biggest portion at 35%, they're looking on behalf of their parents. And the majority of these people are made up of women or daughters calling on behalf of a parent. 10% of searchers are searching on behalf of their spouse. And then the rest is a mix of other relatives. So think nieces, nephews, siblings, maybe even grandchildren, um, or even people that are searching on behalf of a neighbor or a friend. So the big takeaway here is that the biggest segment of your online consumers are made up of a younger generation that's searching on behalf of their parents. And now let's look into how these callers actually perform when it comes to converting into a new resident. So we're looking at the move-in rates by each of these different groups. And if you look at this 30% who are searching for themselves, what you'll notice is they move in at a significantly lower rate. They tend to be lower acuity and therefore they're less pressed when it comes to a timeline. The smaller portion of searches that are looking on behalf of their spouses uh, demonstrate a slightly higher than average move in rate. Uh, but this is where the data gets interesting. Those that are searching for a parent, remember they make up the largest portion of online searchers that we see they also average a significantly higher move-in rate. So put yourself in the shoes of this son or this daughter that's looking on behalf of your parent. And let's pretend that you don't have all of the senior living industry knowledge that I know that you do have. Um, you just want the best for your parent, but you may not be familiar with all of the options that are out there, what level of care is best for them. So the searches that these folks start searching with, they tend to be very generic and very high level. And that is where caring comes into play. So here you'll see two examples of search results from Google. There's one that's related to memory care and one about assisted living. And these orange boxes show all of the listings that are operated by caring that show up in this space. So you can see how big of a presence that we have in these generic search results. And the main reason we are able to rank so well for these searches is a consumer trend towards people preferring third-party aggregator sites. It's not just present in senior living. Think about how you would go about purchasing a new home. Think about how you might look for a hotel for your next vacation. People are going to aggregators to get all the information they need in one place in order to make the best decision for them. They're looking for third-party editorial content as well as consumer reviews. And this trend of consumers preferring a third-party aggregator 
And that being what allows caring to rank so well in Google results is something we're asked about all the time. And I really just wanna highlight that we focus on these broad generic terms uh, to help people as they start out their search. If you're able to capture enough traffic from your own brand terms and your own website, and you've reached 100% occupancy, that is fantastic. But as Han mentioned earlier, that's not the norm. Uh, for those that are at less than 100% occupancy, you're looking for ways to reach potential residents who aren't already familiar with your community. And you may be considering several different marketing options. And so I think that's something you know we want to dive into is that many of our partners, they are leveraging multiple marketing channels along with receiving online referrals from Caring. Uh, but we want to make sure that everybody here understands the different cost considerations when you are making these marketing decisions and you are choosing uh, different marketing channels to, to add to your strategy. So first let's take a look at where you incur costs from different marketing campaigns. So just like lunch, there's no such thing as free marketing. Even if you are talking about word of mouth, um, you rely on great customer service to drive those results. So when you think about different marketing programs, Think about where in the customer journey do you incur the costs that pay for that program? For example, if you're hiring a new employee to do marketing for you, or if you're hiring an agency, you know, you're going to pay for their salary or you're gonna pay for the marketing agency fees to stand up that program. So if you, you know, through an agency or your own staff, if you start to run paid marketing, so you're running Facebook ads or paid search, you know, those run on a pay-per-click model. And so you're paying when someone clicks the ad to just get to your website. Another payment option that you'll see is pay-per-lead, uh, where you're paying a set fee when you receive a potential customer's contact information. And then finally, as Han mentioned earlier, most of our senior living partnerships, they operate on a pay-per-move-in model. So uh, that is charged in the first month when a referred resident moves in. So now that we've talked about the cost considerations, um, there's also you know, the effort that's required to implement, as well as the performance of these different uh, marketing channels at converting into a new resident. So let's take professional referrals as our first example. You know, If you're building a referral network, there isn't much in terms of hard costs. So you know, much in terms of money exchanged, uh, but it does take a significant amount of time for your staff to build those relationships and maintain those relationships over time. But as you know, this time pays off in the form of high converting, high quality referrals uh, from this professional network. So we'd consider there to be very little risk in terms of pursuing this channel. Under online marketing, think about your website, social media, other digital marketing campaigns, the cost associated would be the internal staff or agency that is managing the platform, you know, as well as if you're running pay-per-click advertising, that, that marketing budget that goes towards that. The tricky thing with online marketing is it can take several months, even up to a year in competitive markets to really gain traction and get traffic to your website. And based on the quality of traffic to your site, you know, the conversion rate for move-ins, it's going to vary pretty drastically. Offline marketing, so think direct mail, signage, maybe even local radio ads, they have a similar cost in terms of the staff or agency who are executing on it, maybe the materials that you need uh, to, to send that out. Uh, but the main difference here is that it's very difficult to measure the impact of that marketing. So very hard to tell, you know, did that translate into new residents for you? Because both online and offline marketing, your cost is incurred up front but you know, there's no guarantee of performance, we do consider these to be higher risk when it comes to getting that return on your marketing budget. And then finally, we do have our referral partners such as Caring. Uh, performance can vary based on who's looking, what stage they're at in that process. Han's going to speak later into how you can improve those conversion rates, but because you don't pay a dime until a new resident moves in, we consider this to be lower risk in terms of getting a return on your marketing budget. So now that we've walked through cost considerations of these different marketing channels, Han is going to take, uh, take us back to the online referrals and talk about some pitfalls to avoid when you're looking at your return on investment. Thanks, Olivia. 
so there's some considerations on how you look at ROI uh, for various marketing channels. And as I mentioned before, ROI is generally very positive using referral partners like caring.com. Uh, but let's take a, a case of some common complaints I do here. Uh, say we have five residents here with varying lengths of stay between 10 months and three years, as you can see. And let's say the last caring.com move in only stayed for two months. And this does happen. And however, you know, it's really all about the averages, right? So when you take the whole picture uh, that we've heard, our average length of stay is about 20 months. So some may only stay two months, uh, but others will stay much, much longer in, in, in many sense, uh, many times in number of years. So let's go back to the ROI graph that I showed before. Yes, there may be some residents that let's say at a 20% margin, you won't have positive ROI like the, the two month uh, uh, resident that I showed. But on average at 20 months, your ROI is actually a whopping 375%. And as, Liz, as Olivia mentioned, you don't pay a dime until you actually get a move in. And so this is really about getting an ROI at a very low risk marketing channel spend. So there's really three things to consider. One, the residents you get from us aren't ones captured through your own marketing efforts, as Olivia discussed. And so the ROI is not only positive, it's incremental, right? Two, use the average length of stay when calculating your specific ROI. You know, we've heard 20 months, but it may uh, vary depending on the type of community you are. Um, but don't look at the isolated cases on the extreme, such as the two month uh, person when calculating that, use the average. And three, if you pay per move in, you're mitigating much of that marketing investment risk that many other channels, uh, as Olivia had pointed out, inherently do have. So you wanna be able to diversify your marketing channel mix and investment. All right, um, so we have a lot of current caring partners watching this presentation, as well as people that are just considering whether or not to, to leverage online referrals. What would be your top pieces of advice when it comes to getting the best performance out of online leads? Sure, and we get that question a lot. And, and there's a bunch of things that, uh, that you can do, but there's three main things that I'll discuss today. Uh, one, enhancing your caring.com listing. Uh, boosting reviews, and then and really working your leads. And I'll go through each of these. Um, on enhancing your listing, so this is where it starts. This is your digital storefront. This is what we call the modern day drive-by. Before digital adoption, families would drive by your community and see from the outside before even committing to do uh, a walk-in or a visit. Nowadays, they're instead of driving by your community, they're viewing your community online and many of these residents will be viewing your caring.com listing. Um, so you wanna make sure that listing is as enticing as possible so that the family becomes interested in your community. Uh, three easy ways to make your listing enticing. First, have a great description, including a summary and a list of amenities that really differentiate your community from others. Uh, second, photos. These are critical. The best performing communities on caring.com have at least 12 high res photos in their listing. This is what they see first. And then finally, have up to date cost information so that our team of advisors can refer the right families that are within budget for your community. So let's talk about reviews. Reviews are so critical. You know, a study has shown that 71% of adults 55 and older read online reviews. On average, read seven reviews, but before there's trust built. If you're a caring partner, you can take advantage of our reviews program to drive more customer reviews, as well as you'll get alerted when a review is published. So you really can manage that online reputation, which is so critical today. And finally, Caring recognizes the best of the best each year with a Caring Stars program. And this is really, really great for your internal PR and marketing efforts. It really highlights your community on our website. And then finally, um, when you receive caring reviews, you have to work them. Now you only pay us upon a move-in, but it takes working together to generate that move-in. Like any marketing, we send you leads, not move-ins. 
Speed to lead is critical. Calling these leads quickly will give you an advantage to keep your community top of mind. These families are online shoppers, which means that they're comparing your community with others. Don't assume you're the only game in town. Do talk about what your community, uh, why your community is the right one for them. And finally, following up intentionally and frequently, at least five touches, if not more, will get them into your community. And if you don't use a CRM, we highly recommend using one. We have seen partners who have a, a robust CRM to help them with their sales prospecting and sales uh, process, gives them a much better chance for success, for conversion, and for building your census. So just to recap, what Han hit on there by enhancing your listing, you know, boosting the number of reviews, and really working those leads, you'll be able to get more out of your online referral partnership with Caring. And that concludes the content portion of today's presentation. Now, I've seen a few questions come through, but just remember, um, if you have any questions on, on what you've seen or any questions for, for our Caring team, uh, please do submit through the, the Q&A that you have within Zoom, and we will start diving into those now. All right. So now this one looks great for Han because I know he, he gets this a lot. Um, Han, how does Caring handle leads that have already been in contact with the community? Uh, can you tell them more about our process when it comes to handling duplicate leads? Sure. So uh, Caring, uh, you know, we believe that almost all of our marketing is incremental as Olivia has shown, but there is times when um, our lead is a duplicate of a lead that's received by the community. And we respect that and we honor that, you know, we have the mindset of whoever got it first, you know, uh, gets credit, whether it's the community themselves or actually another lead aggregator. So what happens is uh, if we send the lead, many of our partners actually will reject it through this CRM integration and say, we already got this record or system. And if it's rejected, that's the communities or that's the other lead aggregators and that's not our lead to get credit at all. Uh, if there's no CRM integration, uh, we do allow our partners uh, within a time period to report it as a duplicate. If you report as a duplicate, we file that and say, okay, you already have that lead in your database. Uh, we won't uh, get credit for it uh, if there is a move-in. So we certainly appreciate that. And I think our rules allow for flexibility in reporting duplicate leads and ensuring that you're not having to pay double uh, for a resident. Great question, Olivia. Yes, thank you for submitting that. And we did have another question come through um, with some confusion around caring charging per move in. Um, we do have a lot of folks that are from different types of organizations here, um, some that may require more of a subscription based model. So, Han, would you speak to you know what other types of you know partners we have that that may have that type of payment? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, the vast majority of our uh, senior living operators and in independent living assisted and memory care are on a paper move-in model. Uh, we have found that uh, some providers are actually better suited for success if they're on a subscription model. For example, for resident uh, uh, care homes, um, they're actually on a subscription model uh, where they pay monthly to be able to receive referrals, uh, have the enhanced listing, and there's some other features as part of the subscription uh, listing that's a little bit different than our, um, uh, than our paper move-in model. Um, some communities, for example, in the state of Nevada are actually all on subscription just based on the regs there. Um, so if you have any questions about the type of uh, model you're on, please contact your account manager or, or the partner success team and we'll show kind of those, that email at the end of the presentation. Wonderful. Um, so this question, I think you'll also be great to answer. Where do I go to update and improve my, my listing with Caring? That's a great question. So every uh, Caring partner should have access to the partner portal. It's portal.caring.com, and you will have a username and login. If you have forgotten your password, please contact our team, partnersuccess.caring.com. We'll be happy to reset your password. In the portal, you'll be able to upload photos and you'll be able to upload costs and do a number of things on your own. There are some things that you may not be able to do in the portal and that's okay because if you contact our team uh, or account manager, uh, we'll be able to do all those updates for you on your enhanced listing and make sure that you're set up for success. 
And on the flip side, you know, that relates to partners. We actually have a couple of questions that are very similar. Um, so for people that do not have a partnership right now with caring, um, you know, they're looking and they see themselves on our site, but maybe there's some no photos or they want to update some information. Um, how does it all work in terms of going from just having a listing to actually getting leads and becoming a partner with caring? Uh, it's a very easy process, um, and we'll put the email at the end of the, uh, the slide deck, but if you contact our sales at caring.com or you inquire from one of our inquiry forms, uh, there's various places on our website to do so. Um, somebody will get in touch with you, an account executive, and we'll be able to walk you through the process of getting your uh, listing enhanced. And so you'll be able to upload photos and put those descriptions and, and put cost information, and then importantly, uh, get referrals directly from us. Absolutely. And this, I think, is a great question, too. Um, so after we've sent a referral, so Caring has sent a referral, what does the communication look like between Caring and the, the sales team at the community? Sure. Yeah. So the uh, family advisor uh, will send the referral through, and you should have a direct link with the family advisor. Commonly, it's through email. Uh, but when the family advisor sends the, the lead through uh, to the community, uh, you'll actually get an email directly from the family advisor where you got where you can, with the family advisor, work with that family. The family advisor is really the conduit of communicating with families. So that family advisor will have updates. So please reach out to the family advisor um, uh, as you compare notes and compare experiences uh, as the family starts visiting communities and start making their decisions. And looking through, I've got some people who appreciate us answering those questions. Um, you know, we do have some questions around our different um, models, things that may be best answered one-to-one. -one. And so um, for those, we are going to be in touch with you after this presentation. Um, but let me see. And Another thing is we have some questions regarding specific types of leads or how to handle specific problems um, in terms of challenges around getting tours, things like that. Um, we do have a lot of information on our website right now at partners.caring.com that are geared towards those challenges and helping to assist you kind of have the right processes in place and everything like that. Um, but since we have, yeah, and I would say one comment. Um, you know, I don't think we can go through every single individual yeah. scenario, but the fact is, we want to be good partners with you. If you have challenges with our leads, please get in touch with us. Get in touch with the account manager or partnersbestofcaring.com, and we'll be able to work with you and try to optimize that. We want feedback from our partners. Certainly, there's a lot of uh, scenarios uh, that are different that we can't go through everything on the, this call, but you know, our we are completely aligned in our paper moving model. We don't get paid until you get a resident, mo resident moving in. And so we wanna make sure that we're driving success uh, for you. Absolutely. And um, it does look like there's one more on here that we can certainly answer for you because we touched on it. Uh, do you have to partner with Caring to earn the Caring Star badge? You do not have to partner with Caring uh, to earn the Caring Stars uh, badge. I will say that partner with Caring and having the reviews tools uh, gives you a significantly better chance of, of getting the Caring Stars Award, uh, but you do not have to partner with Caring to earn that award. Yeah. And, and I would say that if you have any uh, questions about our, 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 our Caring Reviews uh, program, please do email reviews at caring.com. We'll be happy to answer those for you. Absolutely. That, that applies to everybody. If you see anything about reviews, you'd like to learn more about our reviews program, um, that team would be happy to help if you reach out. Um, so then, you know, one final note, um, as a lot of time we get this question, uh, we will be distributing this presentation out. Um, it was recorded. So not only will we send the recording, uh, we will also send the slide deck out. Um, and I did just see one more question come through that we can definitely um, go through. What other websites did we say we owned? So there are a bunch. Han, do you want to tackle that one? Do you know them all off the top of your head? 
Uh, sure. I mean, I, I, will, I will name the main ones. We actually own a lot of websites, uh, but uh, uh, the, the main ones are uh, caring.com, uh, seniorhousingnet.com, uh, payingforseniorcare.com, senioradvice.com, and seniorhomes.com um, are, are kind of the main ones. But we do actually own a, a, a large portfolio of, of websites that are going after different audiences uh, within the senior care space. And I, I saw another one come through that I'm sure a lot of people have. Um, thank you for submitting it. So what's the protocol that we have when it comes to distributing the lead out when a family is speaking with our advisors? So is it capped to a few communities? Could it be as many as 20? What what do we typically do there? So um, I've never seen 20 leads uh, <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a single ref, uh, referred family. Um, we balance it. Um, our operations team have protocols in uh, how to match a family with the right community, but it's really situation based. You know, some families want to talk to many, many communities because they want to get a, a real understanding of the options out there. And we have a lot of options in that area. And so we'll refer that family to many communities. Um, you know, some, some families really match just to a handful of communities and we only do those handful of communities. So the way I'll answer that is we certainly understand and respect that you can't blast out leads and have so many communities contact the consumer that is a bad customer experience. We certainly respect that, but we want to provide enough options for the consumer to make an informed decision. And that is a conversation between the family advisor uh, and the family themselves. So it is a range, uh, but it's really specific on the circumstances. And I did have another question pop up from someone who was jumping in and out of the meeting. We are recording. We will distribute this out. And so with that, I think those are all the questions that we're able to, to get to live. Uh, we will be following up with a few who had more specific questions. So um, definitely we've got your contact information. We will let you know. And just to wrap up and uh, review the key takeaways from today, uh, the first is that you know, we do encourage you to leverage online referrals in order to tap into uh, new residents, an incremental pool of screen prospects that you aren't reaching today in order to boost your occupancy. And as you pursue these new channels, make sure you're always measuring your return at the you know, average level and looking overall on your return on investment. Don't focus on those individual anecdotes or individual res residents. Um, and then finally, you can accelerate your growth with caring through enhanced listings, review generation, sales support, and more. If you'd like to learn more, we have two great email addresses for you to contact. For anyone interested in becoming a partner, you can email sales at caring.com. And for current partners who may want to make updates to your account, have trouble with access, anything like that, uh, partner success at caring.com is your go-to. So thank you so much for everyone joining on today. Uh, we do welcome your feedback on today's presentation. And if there are any topics that you'd like to see from Caring in the future, we'd love to hear it. When you close out of this webinar, there will be a survey that pops up. Please let us know there. And as well as you can contact us over the phone, um, this is our sales number listed right here. Or like I said, just email, it, email us at those two addresses. Um, and if you'd like to stay on top of, you know, Caring's upcoming webinars, I encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn, as well as visit our industry site. That's where we have the archive of all these and we'll be publishing after today's presentation. So with that, we will let you get back to your commendable work of helping seniors. And we hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all.